We humans like to simplify things wherever we can. But how does a simple grid system make navigating in the cold polar regions nice and easy? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to class 11 in the GNAV series. Today we're going to be taking a look at grid navigation, which we use to cheat our way out of a few of the problems that are encountered when flying in the polar regions. When we navigate in the polar regions, there is a large change in the direction of true north as we move along the meridians of longitude. At this point A, our relative bearing to true north is very small, and then it gets bigger as we move over towards B, even though we haven't physically traveled that much distance. And it increases by the convergency, which is just in polar regions, the change in longitude. This is what we looked at in the previous class on polar stereographic charts. If instead of using true north, we used magnetic north, we would run into a similar sort of problem. So physically, the location of the magnetic north pole is around northern Canada. So as we travel around the region, the compass will always point towards this point, And it can vary vastly if we were to travel this line, for example. We start off bearing magnetic north, relatively small, and as we get over to B, we're still pointing towards magnetic north, so it's going to be a very large change in angle, despite, again, not covering that much distance physically. This means that if we want to fly in the polar regions using magnetic bearings or true bearings, it would require a constant change in our track to head in the correct direction, which would be difficult to do and make it easy to make mistakes and fly the wrong way, essentially. To solve the problem, we use grid navigation. We essentially overlay a series of parallel lines over the top of the region and use new bearings and directions relative to this new grid. It's not quite a grid, but the grid lines are aligned with a meridian of longitude. And depending on which one it is, we use that as our datum and it's called our grid datum meridian. Usually this is the uh, 000 line, the Greenwich meridian, but not always. We then use a specific type of compass known as a gyro compass which will hold this alignment with the grid data meridian, and we use that to navigate. Or more commonly in the 21st century with computers and everything, we use a flight management system, and it has some clever software which can always point us towards grid north if we need it. So the grid that we use has parallel lines. This means that when we display a great circle on a polar stereographic chart, the straight line, the grid overlay makes our great circle bearing easy to calculate because Grid North is always pointing up towards the top of the page, our Great Circle starts off as X degrees and it continues at X degrees relative to Grid North the whole way along its length. It now essentially looks a bit like a rum line, a line with a constant track direction, which is very easy for flying it. But it's important to remember that there still is a difference between the Great Circle and the rum line because the rum line is defined as a constant bearing based relative to True North not grid north. This grid is just an extra tool to make things simpler and it almost has the effect of converting a great circle to a rum line in the polar regions and it's all relative to grid north not true north. Grid convergence is the difference between the direction of true north and grid north and it's best thought of in the same way as variation and deviation. So if our grid datum meridian in this example is the Greenwich Meridian 000. Our grid north points towards the top of the page, but our true north is always in towards the center of this polar stereographic chart. That difference in between true north and grid north at one location will be the grid convergence, given the symbol GC, for that specific point. The grid convergence will be the difference in longitude between the data meridian and the longitude of the point we are interested in. But the actual value for grid convergence is the opposite to our longitude direction. What I mean by that is that if we are in the west, the grid convergent will be easterly because true north is to the east of grid north. And then if we are in the east, true north is to the west, so the grid convergence is west. This example here, we would have a westerly grid convergence because true north is to the west of grid north we can easily convert from grid north to true north using this grid convergence. And it's a very simple equation. 
So we use true direction plus the grid convergence equals the grid direction, where west is negative and east is positive. And then we can add that onto the end of our Cadbury's Dairy Milk Very Tasty equation. So we could have the compass direction plus the deviation equals the magnetic direction plus the variation equals the true direction plus the grid convergence equals the grid direction. CDMVT, GCG, easy. So let's look at an example of how we would use this. So if we have point alpha, north 80, west 0, 2, 0, and point bravo, north 80, east 0, 2, 0, and the great circle from B to B from A is 0, 7, 0 degrees true, what is the grid direction of the great circle track at B when we have a grid data meridian of 0, 0, 0? So using grid convergency, we can work out the grid direction of the great circle at A, and then we know that the great circle will always have that same grid direction. That's the kind of the point of using grid directions in general. So let's work out the grid bearing at A. We can say that our true plus our grid convergency equals the grid. Grid convergency at point A is west 0 to 0. And remember I said it was the opposite. So our grid convergency will be east by 20 degrees. So in this case, if we're over to the west, this would be our uh, grid north direction pointing up towards the top of the page. We're going to be over to the west by 20 degrees. So our true north would be in towards the center. And that true north is to the east of the grid north. So it's an easterly grid conversion. So 70 degrees true plus our grid conversion, east is positive, so it's just 20, equals our grid. So our grid direction equals 90 degrees. And we'll just give it a little G to signify that it's definitely grid direction. So then that is grid direction is gonna be exactly the same at point B, that's the whole point in using grid directions. So that's a very easy and quick way to do these kind of equations. You could also do this question by drawing out the picture, calculating the convergency, adding on the convergency to the original track, and then figuring out the grid convergency at B. You could convert it that way, but that's quite a long drawn out process when we know how grid directions work. So in summary then, we get problems when navigating with magnetic north or true north in the polar regions because the actual physical location of true north and the magnetic north relative to us changes a lot, even over relatively small differences, uh, small distances. So to counteract this, we overlay a grid. It's not really a grid, it's just a series of parallel lines, which is aligned with a datum meridian. The datum meridian is usually the Greenwich prime meridian, zero, 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 but not always. And then we can navigate off of the grid north. And the grid north basically allows us to fly constant grid tracks for our great circles with reference to grid north instead of reference to either true or magnetic north. And a kind of an easy way to think about this is the grid north allows us to convert the great circle into a rum line. It will have a constant track direction the whole way along, but it is not a full rum line because rum lines are constant tracks relative to true north, and this is a constant track direction relative to grid north. The difference between the grid north and true north is known as grid convergence and can be thought of in the same way as deviation and variation. So we can add it on to our true direction to get our grid direction and to the west it's negative and to the east it's positive and remembering that if we are in the western hemisphere the true north will be to the east of grid north. So our grid convergence will be easterly. And if we are in the eastern hemisphere, our true north will be to the west of our grid north. So that would make the grid convergence westerly or negative. And you can add this equation onto the end of our long one. 
So we can say that compass direction plus deviation equals the magnetic direction. Magnetic direction plus the variation equals the true direction. True direction plus the grid convergence equals the grid direction.